What's going on YouTube? Young Johnny here. Before this video starts, I just wanted to tell you guys that I was planning on making this video a Patreon exclusive. You know, for those that don't know, I started Patreon like a long time ago. But I don't really promo it much anymore because the only one people that's actually interested in it to, you know, find it and, you know, hopefully join because I put a lot of effort into the content that I put over there. And, you know, I was thinking about putting this video on here, but I enjoyed making it so much that I decided to just make it available for everybody to see the kind of quality that I'm putting into my Patreon accounts, you know. So with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Maybe it'll coerce you, you know, maybe push you a little bit towards the Patreon. But yeah, I just wanted to tell y'all that. Okay. Like most people, I've been through a lot of different phases during my time here on Earth. Phases that were just completely random and what happened as soon as something struck the interest of my young head that may or may not have been disproportionate to my skinny body. I had phases of loving WWE, dancing, sports, fashion, Michael Jackson. If, if you can name it, I've probably been obsessed with it at some point in my life. But one of my most fondest obsessions that I can remember was the time that I really loved skateboarding. This was around 2014 to 2015, and I don't remember exactly how I got down the rabbit hole of loving skateboarding, but it, it, it just happened, and I went deep. For hours, I would watch Battles of the Barracks videos, familiarizing myself with some of the greatest skaters. I started playing with tech decks and, you know, learning fingerboarding. At the time, YouTuber Aaron Cairo, who runs, you know, the Braille skateboarding channel, was really big, so, you know, I was watching him a lot. It was just a great time for me because, you know, I could do and know anything about skateboarding other than actually skateboarding because, you know, the thought of actually doing it scared the shit out of me. But of course, you could imagine that this love that I have for skateboarding for a fact would eventually transcend into my love for video games because, you know, I was still playing them at the time. So obviously I had to find a game to simulate what I couldn't do in real life. Now, during this time, I only had a PlayStation 3, and this was a little before the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 game came out that we're gonna pretend never came out, was released, so the options for a new skateboarding game was pretty slim. But there was one name out there that wasn't necessarily new at the time, but was without a doubt a title still in its prime among gamers. That's right, I'm talking about Skate 3. EA's 2010 release of the third entry in their beloved series. Thinking back on this game only brings me great memories because this game single-handedly set the bar for what an arcade yet somewhat realistic skateboarding game should look like. Something that modern skate games are trying to do but still don't quite capture the same magic, at least in my opinion. So today, I want to take a brief trip back in time and do an overview on this title and talk about what made it so special to me. Doing so hopefully leaving you with a better understanding as to why Skate 3 is the pinnacle of skateboarding games. As you'd expect from a skateboarding game, Skate 3 embraces all things in skateboard culture at least, you know, circa 2010. The game's promo videos and in-game renders features appearances from beloved skaters of all kind like Danny Way, Rob Deerdeck, before the endless ridiculousness reruns, Benny Fairfax, Eric Costin, and many, many more. I mention this because even though this wasn't anything new done, you know, by any means, you know, the Pro Skated series did this years before, having some of the biggest names in the culture included in just this one game alone was enough to make skater fans love the game even more. Because like, imagine if any of these guys was your favorite skater, you'd be ecstatic to see them in the game. Just like how I was ecstatic to see my favorite rapper ASAP Rocky in the recent Need for Speed game, even though he's literally doing everything in life except driving a new album. That's a different story. Anyway, once you start the game, you'll immediately see that the game doesn't take itself too seriously and that you're in for a fun time as your character who's apparently batshit crazy basically attempts suicide because he does a daredevil skate run off from a stadium building. One of the best intros I've seen in a while. Now, once you wake up and customize your character, you meet Rita, a character that you're friends with that gives you the bright idea of starting your own board company because of your newfound uh, questionable fame. And so, as a way of selling boards throughout the game, you have to gain reputation in the skate world by doing activities like photo shoots, entering street contests, vert contests, meeting pro skaters, racing, more suicide, all for the means of gaining respect among established skaters and selling more boards, which, you know, by the way, unlock new gear as, you know, more boards are sold. This is pretty much the driving factor of the whole game, simply put, but 
honestly, it's just enough story because even though meeting the characters and pro skaters who do their own voice acting in the game is really cool, the real fun and what you're most likely going to be occupied with is the gameplay. This game continues the flick it controls established with the previous skate games and it is revolutionary. Basically, whatever right stick you have on your controller is what you use to flick and do any flip trick or ollie. For example, fastly flicking the right stick straight down then straight up is how you do an ollie. Or flicking the stick straight down then you know slightly right is how you do a kick flip or a heel flip depending on if you're you know goofy or regular stance. Yeah, I was a skateboard nerd. But this simple yet somewhat challenging to master game mechanic just feels so natural and even modern skate games take similarity from the mechanic. And each trick you pull off is dependent on how precise you are on being able to flick the right stick. Now as far as the vert tricks go or you know the tricks you do in the air, those come down to basically combo button schemes and are pretty easy to learn at least when compared to the flick tricks. I also think that the game does a good job of balancing both styles of skating. The entire map is filled with spots that will satisfy any kind of skater you want to be with seemingly no limits on where you can even place your own items to create a dope trick line. And not only do you have all of this action in the single player campaign, all of this can be brought onto multiplayer where you can share the fun with all of your friends and everything that the game has to offer. But don't even let me get started on this game's iconic soundtrack, Jesus Christ. Between this game and the old SmackDown vs Raw game tracks, I don't know which ones I play more on a regular basis just because of the pure happy feeling of nostalgia I get from listening to them. But it's not just nostalgia, these tracks are genuine bangers that many rock fans or you know older music listeners will probably already know and adore so that just shows the care put into the music of the game. I can't play anything on here because of copyright you know it is wicked out here but if you've never heard the soundtrack I extremely recommend you do so through YouTube, Spotify or whatever because these songs are great to play while you're working or doing something you wouldn't mind having your mind occupied with the music. So with all of this I'm really only scratching the surface with Skate 3 and its lore and gameplay but I think the main takeaway from everything that I talked about is that the game is still a cult classic and it's still a game that many people are finding new ways to get enjoyment out of all these years later. It put a dent into the skateboarding game genre that's had everlasting effects and I can comfortably say that this game influenced a generation of skaters that wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to the sport in the same way if they hadn't played the game before. Or at least it taught them more about skating than what they would have already known, including people like myself. So for that, Skate 3 deserves all of the positive light and praise that it receives and one can only hope that the next Skate game will be half as influential as this one. So what do you guys think about Skate 3, man? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, if you like on the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.